Hey everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. Welcome to today's episode of Stocks for Breakfast. It is Tuesday, July 2nd, 2020. I don't know, I'm having a hard time with the dates these days. Every day is just blending together. Every month is blending together right now. Um, today's video is going to be an interesting one. We're going to discuss trade management. We have quite a few people in the boot camp and in the trading room right now who are doing an amazing, amazing job of following the structure of reading the tape uh, and finding good ideas. Uh, and as I promised, <laughs> the number one problem you got to have is learning how to hold good trades longer, which is just an amazing problem to have. And it's not a coincidence and it's not luck. It's, it's, it's really setting up great ideas uh, and then allowing the order flow to do the hard work for you. And if, if you're stressed out about your trading right now or you have to watch every tick and um, you, you just don't feel comfortable in your positions, it just means that there's a little bit of a, a jump you need to make from being a chart reader to being a tape reader. And really that jump is, is, it's not a huge jump, but you have to understand what to look at. It just means that there's something missing. And that, that last piece for some people of, of what's missing is really understanding how and when you need to make a decision to stick with the trade or get out of a trade. And the other part of that is how do you book profits? Uh, do you continue to add to a position? Do you uh, get out when somebody else might be looking to add to a position? So in other words, you get a push up and a pause under what conditions would that dictate where it slows down and you get out. Yesterday I did a video on momentum trading uh, and that was very short individual candlestick type stuff, uh, which is tape reading with inside of the order flow. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit more longer term around the order flow and we could be talking about between 9.30 and 4 o'clock if you're a day trader or we could be talking about uh, June 1st to June 30th and the order flow within that window and then even from quarter to quarter. It really depends on what time frame uh, you, you, you're trading on. We get a lot of feedback from people who are working their job full time and would love to be involved in the market, but they, they can't be a day trader. Well, first of all, I have some advice for you. <laughs> if you have another full-time job, uh, don't even think about becoming a full-time day trader until uh, you've had at least three to six months of consistent profitability. I will tell you, I went down that path where I <laughs> left my family business and became a day trader. Uh, it's not an easy path because in your mind, you have this, 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 time frame you're like i'm going to learn how to become profitable immediately and i'll just start paying my bills right away and the learning curve uh to to take all that pressure and put it on yourself where you don't have that safety net anymore uh can be challenging it, it can really be challenging and trading as with any business really uh if you've ever owned a business it will always cost more and take longer than you fully expect while you're getting it off the ground and trading is no different um but here's my here's my point my point is even if you join the boot camp and can watch the videos and watch everything after the fact while you're keeping your full-time uh, job, um, it's beneficial. And we actually talked about this yesterday because um, day trading or at least watching the day trading scenario. So for example, let's say that we're calling out trades day, you know, trade up to trade up to trade intraday. You, you're kind of getting an accelerated learning curve for what I'm about to show you right now, which is what to do on the higher time frames and learning to hold. Here's the main point that I want to make, though. With trade management, the targets that you have or the trade expectation or the prof profit expectation is probably a better way to word it. Sorry, I have cat hair on me right now. <laughs> you have to understand that if you've done a job of setting up order flow, if you've done a job of identifying you want to be a buyer or a seller, and let's just use be a buyer because it's just 100% easier to understand than short selling. You need to know that you put that trade together because of, of, of a picture, a picture that you say that I believe this stock is going up. Now, you hear me often talk about how long has that stock been uh, in play? How long has the smart money been buying that stock? Is it one day? Like we've been talking about Boeing quite a bit recently where it has one good day and then nothing for five days. One good day and then nothing for five days. That's incredibly hard to have conviction absolutely should be able to capitalize on it on the one day, but your conviction level is lower. However, if that same stock has had buying for uh, a month, even a week, let's even say two days, two days where it's really clear, and then you go out to a week, and then you go out two weeks, and you go out two months, and you go back to longer than two months, you have to think in your mind that the reason a stock moved that far for that long 
Smart money keeps allocating new money to that stock. They keep believing in the future of that stock. And I was actually asked, asked a great question the other day is, how do you know the smart money is involved? Well, the smart money is literally holding higher lows and creating new higher highs. They're paying up for the stock because of what they believe is the future of that stock. That's pretty powerful information without even knowing anything else. A lot of people talk about the charts and say, everything that's need to be known is in the charts. That's partly true. As we saw in DraftKings last week, you also need to pay attention to the volume, what type of price action you have, and where that volume occurs. When you start to put those pieces together, we called the decline in DraftKings last week. Um, we said not to buy FSLY as a swing trade uh, yet because of how far and how fast it moved. So putting those pieces together is really what makes you a profitable trader. And I'm talking about stuff that has moved over days, weeks, and months, not necessarily as a day trade. But the same principles apply as a day trader. The interesting thing as a day trader is it's magnified. Uh, and you can also um, put too much emphasis on one candle, which is where I see a lot of traders um, really struggle at the beginning until we, until we have a lot of conversations about you, you built up this argument that the stock has been uh, obvious, uh, obviously in play with the smart money as a stock that they're buying for the last three months. I'll just use three months as an example. And then you let one five minute candle get you out of a position. It, it, looking back on it, it's just kind of silly. Uh, but we do that because we're, we're focused. We're like this, we're like, oh my gosh, that, that it just pulled back. It's red. You need to really work as, as, as a trade management specialist, for lack of a better way of putting it, is if you did all the hard work to find a good idea, you need to determine what, what would change that idea. And certainly as an intraday day trader, that, that idea could change intraday, <clears throat> or you can just get stopped out, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> where you would need to get back in. The longer time frames, um, it's a lot easier, believe it or not, to determine whether or not the trade has turned. And we're going to actually go over an example uh, using the SPY ETF um, to determine whether the buying opportunity was obvious and you should still hold the idea despite pauses and maybe even some pullbacks, how to recognize when it goes sideways and there's no bias anymore, and that would make the condition tougher. Uh, and it's very easy to tell because we're going to actually show you on the charts right now. Um, and then actually what you would do to hold that position to look for longer term gains. So my, my point of the whole thing is we're talking about trade management. We're talking about after you find the order flow is how do you determine what, you, what happens between entry and exit for yourself? And what is your plan? Uh, what's your plan of attack for if it pulls back? What's your plan of attack if it explodes in your favor? So for a, a example, as a day trader, you could be trading momentum like I taught yesterday, which is as soon as it moves in your favor, you're looking for, for it to slow down and then you're looking to get out. And that's, that's pure day trading. There's also a, a school of thought that you just want to be long or short for the day. And that's really the foundation of what I talk about with the tape reading principles. Um, we, we actually call them a buy day, a sell day, or a sell short day. So that literally implies you're looking to hold the trade for the day, which is where much bigger gains happen. Now, the part of the problem that you have is a mental problem where you might be up $2,000 on a trade and you said, I want to be a buyer of this stock today and I'm going to hold it to the close. Uh, and then you see 2000 become a thousand. You're like, oh my gosh, I just gave back a thousand dollars. You're going to play games with yourself in your head and you're going to say, I just threw away a thousand dollars. That's not really the point. The point is you need to identify what type of trader you are and what kind of trade management you want to implement. It's usually momentum trading or position trading. Now, the, the problem with position trading for most traders, <laughs> a little trader, trader, is, is the giving back of profits. But what you forget, what you tend to uh, let go uh, because of one trade that came back is there's going to be two, or I'll just use five as an example. There's going to be three out of five trades where they were moving really good in your favor, all the conditions were good, and the stock pulled back, and you took a small profit on it, let's say a flat. God forbid, do not take a loss on a, on a, on a trade like that, especially one that moved in your favor. So the, your game plan, your personal game plan was to hold that stock and hold it to the close. And we've seen like the other day, um, Boeing had a mo one monster big day. Uh, Spot had a $25 intraday trading range. Holding to the day could have made your entire month in one trade. 
So you have to balance mentally holding the one trade and that one following through, which could be one trade per week, by the way, versus the other times where you had a really solid profit and it pulled back. So you have to know and be okay with those fluctuations in exchange for the bigger moves. You'll trade a lot less. It'll probably be a lot less stressful. Um, the only stressful part will be how do you take your profits? Do you, do you, do you book $2,000 and say I'm done for the day? Or then do you start sending me messages saying I, I took 2000 and it went up another $4 and I could have made another three. You can't vacillate between the two. You need to know exactly what your plan is and follow it. So we're gonna do a quick chart, chart reading analysis here of the SPY ETF and really dig into what this looks like. So we're, we're gonna focus specifically here. Uh, once we bottomed out, and started to rally, which, which really, if we draw the trend line here, this is really where we broke the trend line. So we started a new one here. So this entire way up, we never broke this trend line. So the better side of the market would have been to be a buyer. Now here's, what, here's the interesting section, which is right here. This is where we broke the trend line. So as soon as you break the trend line, you now have to say to yourself, something changed. When something changes, you now have a high prior to the break, and you have a new low um, after the break, which is what caused the break. So you have to let it pull back and let that finish. And when it starts going back up, you now have your low established. So within this window, within this box that I typically call it, that's where the lower probability trading is because right now that's the right price. So here's the interesting part. This little blip below this box is what I see a lot of intraday traders have problems with. And they can see it a little bit more clear there is they let one candlestick influence and have more dominance than the, the previous months. And that's where a lot of traders get shaken out of positions. So let's, let's add that to the equation. So now you're not going to let one candlestick get you out of a good trade, but you're still in this box. So what has to happen here now is your expectation for follow through is significantly diminished because you're still here. You see only one of two things can happen. You start a new trend to the downside or you continue the trend to the upside. So there's one candlestick that broke down, which neither one of these actually broke down and closed in there. So that's an influence as well. Um, that tells you that it has not changed the trend and you get this beautiful, incredibly profitable move to the upside. So once you break to the upside, then you actually draw a new trend and you look for a different break. Now this broke down because of the Fed announcement, but why it doesn't really matter. Um, so we actually drew this, that was the high. And this was the low. This is where we broke, right? We said once we break down and turn around, now we have a new box. Now, price action has been consolidating quite a bit here in the SPY, and most people have felt the choppiness of it because we're at another box. So now we have a decision, and not really a decision, we have an observation to make. There's nothing new here until in, in the SPY specifically. It could be any stock you're watching until it breaks to the downside and breaks this level or continues to move to the upside. So right now, if this was a stock that you're trading, which honestly, a lot of people are in the tape reading room right now, uh, it's a little frustrating because from day to day, you really can't get any kind of clean movement because it's stuck, really. There's no, that's the right price. This window right now is the right price. So a lot of money gets lost in here, which is a potential change of trend area. So you as a trader really need to identify which trader am I? Am I looking for the next move? which go back to the video I did yesterday on momentum, or am I looking for the next order flow move? So it's momentum move versus order flow move. And then your trade management has to match what your objective is. So we're, you know, we're talking about daily charts here. So if you're keeping your full-time job and you want to learn how to do this stuff, uh, by all means, send me an email and we'll figure out what the best path for you to do that is. But I wanted to open your mind a little bit that trading you need to decide an objective. You need to decide, are, are you selling pizza or are you selling, you know, a hundred dollar steak dinner, you know, it's, you, it's tough to do both. So once you decide on which one you're running, um, then the way the trades fluctuate aren't really so stressful because you know exactly what you plan to do. Uh, and then it's just easier to run your business. So uh, I hope that helps clarify some stuff, especially if you happen to be keeping your full-time job or working your full-time job uh, and, and needing it, you have know, some questions about trade management and being frustrated uh, about some, some trades that may have, uh, unexpectedly did something um, you weren't ready for. Uh, and really all of that kind of um, challenge vanishes when you know exactly how you plan on managing the trade before you got in. 
because you know what kind of business you want to run. So I hope that helped. Um, if you have any questions, absolutely leave a comment in the uh, below the video. And if you found the video helpful, definitely click down and subscribe too. Have a great day.